The relationship between bin Laden and the CIA uh, was essentially, uh, he was one of their assets, one of the people they could turn to for help if they had questions, if they wanted somebody recruited, if they wanted somebody sent somewhere, if they wanted information, if they wanted something done, they went to bin Laden. Bin Laden isn't wanted by the FBI, and he was on a CIA payroll? Is he the brutal Islamic terrorist we have been led to believe, or a mere frontman? My question was, is it not true that the United States government paid $300 million to the bin Laden family for the construction of the military camps at that point, then the person who was uh, testifying had no choice but to admit yes, that the money had gone to the bin Laden family for the construction of those uh, uh, military training facilities in Afghanistan. However, he added that none of that money went to bin Laden himself. Of course, it was a joke. <laughs> Osama wasn't the only one working with U.S. intelligence. Hijackers also had ties to federal agencies. Alleged terrorists Khalid al-Madar and Nawaf al-Zahami lived with and rented from an FBI informant. The New York Times stated on October 6, 2002, the Federal Bureau of Investigation had a confidential informer who rented rooms in California to two of the September 11th hijackers. But the Bureau is resisting a request from the Congressional Committee investigating the attacks to interview the informer and his FBI handler. Several members of the FBI had their investigations into terrorism impeded and shut down, especially when they got close to bin Laden. John O'Neill was the FBI counter-terror chief responsible for the investigation into Osama bin Laden. On August 22, 2001, after claims of a repeated obstruction of his investigations into Saudi funding, O'Neill left the FBI. This document is marked secret and WF, which means it walked its way out of the Washington Bureau of the FBI. It indicates that before the attack of September 11th, agents had wanted to question two members of a very powerful family for their connections to a suspected terrorist organization, Omar and Abdullah bin Laden. But the agents weren't allowed to. O'Neill went on to take a new post as head of World Trade Center security. He would move into his office days before 9-11 and be killed during the attacks. Yeah. I have four children. I've lost friends that, uh, John, yeah. John, uh, my friend from the FBI was killed. John O'Neill, oh, I lost John people too. We, we lost a lot of family members. What did John O'Neill do before he worked in the John, World Trade Center? John was the FBI, head the of the FBI. FBI. He was yeah. tracking down fucking- Osama. Why did he, he was leave? tracking Why down did Osama. He because the government didn't Osama. listen to him. The government didn't listen exactly. to him. The FBI, hold on, let's, we want to talk Please, call a car to car? The FBI, is, the on, FBI right fucked up. They knew about the flight training. Yes. That was a fuck up for having these people in yes. our country. We all agree on something. And the important thing is you have to understand, I feel what you feel. I've lost oh, friends there. I feel what you feel. That was my, our world trade, that was our people that fucking died that day. At a time when bin Laden was the most wanted man in the world, why would intelligence agencies stop their own investigations, especially as they were closing in on him? Robert Wright and others within the FBI also had their investigations into terrorism stopped prior to 9-11. Since August of 1999, I've been working to legally expose the very real and foreseeable Middle Eastern terrorist threats to American citizens at home and abroad. From 1993 to 1999, I was assigned to the Chicago Division's Counterterrorism Task Force. The successful investigation, which was codenamed Vulgar Betrayal, V-U-L-G-A-R, Betrayal, led to the June 1998 seizure of $1.4 million of Middle Eastern terrorist funding. These funds were linked directly to Saudi businessman Yassine Qadi. On October 12, 2001, Yassine Qadi was designated by the United States government as a financial supporter of Osama bin Laden. Larry Clayman of Judicial Watch initially tried to help get Wright's story to the proper authorities. He wanted to come forward long before 9-11. We were taking those steps beginning last summer to do that. The FBI had 30 days to allow that to occur. They violated their own regulations. They covered it up. If you didn't hear me, I went specifically. I called the Attorney General's office just days after 9-11. I said, Dave Shippers and I represent a special agent of the FBI Chicago field office who has years of information about how the FBI did not do its job, did not 
in any way investigate a meaningful way money laundering in the United States. You're now claiming you want to do this. I'd like to make them available to you, Attorney General Ashcroft. And I was met with a response by Michael Chertoff, head of the criminal division. We're tired of conspiracy theories. Michael Chertoff will later become the head of Homeland Security, the department set up to fight the war on terror after 9-11. Wright was also restricted from telling any specifics about their investigation. Robert Wright was then prevented from working on terror investigations. So what happened to Wright? He was demoted in and around the time period leading up to 9-11. He's working on innocuous, meaningless things. That's what he's doing. Yes. He's a paper pusher. It's because these monies were going through some very powerful U.S. banks with some very powerful interests in the United States. These banks knew or had reason to know that these monies were laundered by terrorists. Uh, and there are very significant potential conflicts of interest in both the Clinton and Bush administration, and in particular this Bush administration, uh, who is as tight with Saudi Arabia as you can get. The president's father used to stay with the bin Laden family when he would go to Saudi Arabia. Former President Bush spent the night in D.C. at the White House on September 10th. We've also learned at NBC that there was a President Bush in the White House during the morning of these events. His father, former President Bush, was actually at the White House the morning of the attack. The next day, elite financiers of the Carlyle Group would meet. This global private equity investment firm would profiteer enormously from the wars in the Middle East. At the table were both Bush Sr. and Osama's brother, Shafiq bin Laden. The Bush and Bin Laden families had been members since the 90s and would reap the benefits of terrorism coming to America. After 9-11, the company would become public. All, all I do agree with you is on one thing. Fucking Bush and Clinton with their relationship with Saudi fucking yes, Arabia. Yes, I agree yes. with you. They're kissing their asses like that. That's right, right, bullshit. Right. Yeah. Because they're sucked up and that family that took off, that's a fucking crime. Exactly. The family Mr. Deedle is referring to is of course the Bin Laden. While all domestic flights were grounded, suspects closest to the supposed mastermind behind 9-11 were allowed to leave on chartered flights. Let's show you some video that was taken exclusively by News Channel 2 eight days after 9-11. That man there is Osama bin Laden's younger brother, Khalil, who had been here vacationing with other family members there on an estate that they owned in West Orange County. Now I guess we can safely say that there were people within the FBI and other agencies who actively protected and aided the alleged terrorists. With all the resources available to U.S. intelligence, you would think that someone within would have detected something. Well, one did. The black operation program Able Danger identified the hijackers prior to 9-11, but the FBI wasn't interested. Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, an intelligence officer inside Able Danger, tried to blow the whistle several times. Was the commission that investigated the 9-11 attacks told that lead hijacker Mohammed Atta had been identified and as al-Qaeda operative more than a year before terrorists struck? I'm told confidently by the person who did move the material over that the 9-11 commission received two briefcase size containers of documents. I can tell you for a fact that would not be one one twentieth of the information that, that Able Danger consisted of during the time we spent. Schaefer would also meet with Philip Zelikow, the executive director of the 9-11 Commission. What did Schaefer tell Zelikow? And I'm quoting how I remember saying it. We found, as part of the data run, we found two of the three cells which conducted the 9-11 attacks to include Atta. Schaefer says his unit linked Atta to al-Qaeda leaders, but would not